welcome to this session of organizational behavior in today we will be talking about uh, personality and values primarily we are going to talk about chapter 5 uh, which deals with uh, research on personality and its relationship with behavior and more importantly how it's important for the workforce and the companies that we are working for this chapter also deals with uh, the different values people have and how these values shape up work-related behaviors of ours. The primary learning objectives of this chapter are to look into the description of personality, its different uh, important aspects, then to look into the different benchmarks and processes to identify, describe, and measure uh, different uh, strengths and weaknesses of different sorts of personality within the workforce and then look into the cultural aspects of it and how uh, people's personality is being defined by different uh, situation uh, in social uh, context in a professional context and eventually we will be looking into why it's important for the managers and the leaders to know more about the personality and values of the people working with them. According to the book, personality is a dynamic concept describing the growth and development of a person's whole psychological system. In a professional setting, managers always want to know the different personalities of the people working under them or working with them. But it's always a challenge to measure personality. There are different tests available um, in academia and definitely in the professional world to look for a uh, different sort of a measurement. But uh, nevertheless, it has been a very challenging issue uh, to quantify or to better understand and communicate uh, different uh, source of personality within certain frameworks. In many cases, what we have seen is measuring personality uh, is more or less a self-reporting surveys or self-reporting uh, tests. When it comes to uh, determine the different factors of personality or to put different personalities into different boxes, uh, people always ask the questions where, how this one's personality has been influenced, has been shaped out. Uh, does the society have anything to do with it or the family uh, influence? Or the, is there any kind of biological influence from the parents uh, passed on from generations to generations. So this very factor uh, is a, a heredity and uh, that refers to this heredity approach according to the book um, argues that the ultimate explanation of an individual's personality is the molecular structure of the genes located in the chromosomes. The book interestingly talks about uh, uh, several examples where they argue that uh, in many cases uh, the researchers have examined uh, the identical twins separated right after birth growing up in two different households uh, in two different socioeconomic conditions but ending up uh, choosing more or less similar stuff so that shows that there can be a lot of influence uh, based on genes or some of the biological factors the scientists have talked about before. So that's one of the theories when it comes to determining personality of any individual. Earlier researchers, according to the book, tried to identify and label different sorts of uh, personality characteristics. Um, those who are shy, aggressive, submissive, lazy, ambitious, and so on. And uh, the experts also mentioned that when these kind of characteristics were uh, visible uh, in or present in one's uh, uh, behavior for a longer period of time, then those become personality traits. Now, 
there have been many efforts to identify the primary personality traits within a human being but eventually there has been a lot of confusions and uh, there were the the lists uh, the lists were too many and too long to have some sort of a generic framework the most famous one uh, in terms of uh, identifying the personality framework uh, with a, of a person or a workforce is Myers-Briggs uh, Type Indicator or MBTI. Uh, here, uh, individuals are classified uh, in uh, different sorts of groups, uh, either as extroverted or introverted. Um, they can be sensing, uh, they can be sensing or intuitive. Uh, they can be thinking or you know, falling into the feeling group and uh, they can also be perceiving or judging and all these classifications are then combined into 16 different personality types uh, for example uh, if uh, somebody is INTG TJ uh, then they are classified as visionaries so According to this framework, these people or the people who belong to this group are usually have original minds and great drive. Um, they are characterized uh, as skeptical, critical, independent, determined, and in many cases often stubborn. Uh, the book chapter talks in details about this MBTI method, which uh, is highly recommended that we should study in details about this. And this is widely used uh, for the record. Uh, different organizations uh, like Apple, AT&T, Citigroup, GE, and many others internationally use this uh, uh, MBTI method uh, to look into the personality characteristics of the workforce. In addition to MBTI, uh, there is another impressive body of research that supports five basic dimensions underlying all other personality uh, traits or dimensions uh, so these are the five basic uh, uh, factors uh, defined as extroversion agreeableness conscientiousness uh, emotional stability and openness to experience according to the studies different studies and uh, especially we have seen in the book the most crucial one is the third one among these uh, five uh, traits. In this exhibit, we have seen uh, that the research supports when we are looking for a successful CEO of a multi-million dollar company or a multinational companies, uh, the more important factors, uh, personal traits to look into within conscientiousness uh, are persistence, attention to details, efficiency, analytical skills, um, things like that. And the less important ones, according to the study, which uh, we have identified uh, among the successful CEO candidates, are teamwork, flexi flexibility, or adaptability, uh, and enthusiasm. We should uh, remind ourselves here that these are relatively less important, but in no way these are not imp uh, these are not crucial or critical uh, for the success of any head or functional head of a company. These five factors appear to be uh, present in all cross-cultural studies. Um, that's a great thing to have because before we talked about there are so many uh, person different personal traits within different leads that was tough for one to make any kind of generic format or any kind of gen general conclusion so in this chapter specifically we are focusing on the findings of the US research and uh, what we have seen among the five uh, big five traits conscientiousness uh, is the best predictor of job performance within US. In addition to the five uh, big uh, personality traits, there are also three who have been identified as uh, the darker ones, according to the authors. Uh, the first one is Machiavellianism. Um, according to the 
middle age uh, uh, Italian uh, scholar and statesman uh, Niccolo Machiavelli uh, who wrote The Prince which talks about uh, the pragmatism and the ways uh, uh, less of uh, uh, emotion a person should acquire power and how can uh, he uh, have a control over others um, so Machiavellianism talks about uh, uh, emotionless uh, quest uh, uh, where anything uh, can uh, like the end uh, justifies the means uh, then we have narcissism that the tendency to be arrogant uh, have the grandiose sense of self-importance uh, to some extent what we have seen uh, in the first example uh, in the first page of this chapter uh, and these narcissistic behaviors can um, require excessive admiration and uh, also there is always this sense of entitlement and then uh, the third um, dark uh, trait person uh, per uh, personality trait we can have is the psychopathy which uh, talks about the tendency for a lack of concern for others and a lack of guilt or remorse when uh, uh, someone's action can cause harm uh, these are all bad but at the same time when there is hardcore competition we have seen uh, in many places that uh, people may sometimes try to follow uh, Niccolo Machiavelli uh, and uh, when it comes to uh, a healthy competition among the human resource certainly Machiavellianism may not be the most uh, friendliest option but definitely it can help that's my personal opinion uh, when we are talking about cutthroat uh, corporate life and uh, huge competition between uh, uh, different competitors uh, in the company or outside the company. There have been different frameworks to demonstrate how the big five traits can predict uh, behavior uh, of people at work. One of these um, is approach and avoidance framework um, that uh, casts personality traits as motivations and talk and it helps to explain how we can predict uh, uh, that the people will react to the positive uh, stimuli um, which is uh, related with the approach motivation and how the people will be reacting or averting uh, due to the negative stimuli uh, in a situation and that is uh, kind of uh, frameworked uh, through the avoidance motivation. There are other uh, frameworks uh, in addition to approach and avoidance one. Um, the book talks about the core self-evaluation, self-monitoring, and proactive personality test. A very important one among these, uh, in addition to the previous ones that we mentioned, is uh, to look into the situation strength theory uh, because it talks about uh, the nature of different situations and how it entails or enforces the people or the workforce to react to such situation um, uh, in, in their workplace. Uh, for example, uh, if we are talking about the responsibility of uh, a manufacturing plant uh, worker where her or his uh, primary job is to connect uh, equipment A to equipment B. If he or she cannot do it, uh, cannot react properly to this task, then definitely there will be a fault in the manufacturing line. Now, according to this uh, situation strength theory, uh, this this is a strong situation uh, and hence the reaction of the person the behavior of the person reactionary behavior of the person has to be very precise uh, on the other hand uh, those uh, if the reactions or the output of uh, certain uh, uh, stimuli or certain situation within a workplace uh, can be 
may anything can be up in the air and uh, you know, the workers or the workforce who are assigned to such uh, situations are free to react whatever way they can then uh, according to this theory that's uh, less uh, less uh, than that's a weaker uh, situation now this is interesting because according to the book uh, different and different studies what we have seen is uh, this uh, strong situation is not always good for the workforce in many cases when we are looking into the startup cultures when we are looking for innovation when we are looking for uh, some sort of optimizations and convergence and synergy between different work departments or different uh, type of uh, product development uh, this, these are the situations where uh, the absence of strength uh, can be very very critical this exhibit 5.3 talks about trade activation theory this is one of the frameworks to see how the big five trades that we talked about before are more relevant. What it, according to this, um, the authors want to show that the some there are some situations, events, or interventions uh, within our workplace that can activate a certain trait more in relation uh, with respect to others. For example, if we look into uh, innovation uh, requirement a personal trait within a person then we see that that when a person is an actor a systems analyst um, an advertising writer then for them innovation uh, is something that's very very critical very very important but if uh, a person is a medical technician or a person is a pump operator for them innovation uh, requirement may not be the highest priority or may that may not be the personal trade that should get the stronger stimuli in addition to different personality traits people also carry with them the basic convictions about what is right wrong good bad desirable or not so desirable and those are those convictions are called values and in our previous discussions we have also talked about that such values or convictions can be a result of our socio-economic uh, background and in many cases our peers or the people who are surrounding us also have a huge role to play in uh, making such uh, the development of such values and uh, the authors also talked about two different kind of values, terminal, uh, terminal and instrumental, where in order to achieve some end states of existence, for example, we can say that uh, I want economic success in life. Uh, we may have to go through certain desired conditions and we have to practice certain values in our life to achieve those. And those are called instrumental values, who are the preferred modes of behavior uh, to achieve those uh, things. So here, if I want economic success, as I we have mentioned before, I want to have a personal discipline in life. I want to do hard work in life. So this way, uh, there are some other examples that I think we should uh, read uh, thoroughly in the chapter. Such values also talk about the way different generations or different groups of people um, react or uh, react to their workplace or they such values also define how they perceive life how the workforce would behave uh, this exhibit 5.4 uh, talks about different cohorts the baby boomers uh, the generation X and the later generations and how wha what are the their dominant work values and how that can affect uh, the way they will be productive or not so productive in the workplace. It's very important to link individuals' values and personalities at workplace. That in organizational behavior helps the managers and the uh, company leaders uh, to 
look into their workforce and to better uh, to be better informed to manage them efficiently exhibit 5.5 talks about holland's typology of personality and congruent occu uh, occupations here there are different types that uh, the researcher uh, talked about or classified uh, we look into realistic investigative social conventional enterprising and artistic so these are the different types of activities uh, that uh, the researcher put uh, different characteristics on and eventually based on those there are certain uh, occupations that the people can fit in and the whole idea is that uh, if you are shown certain uh, characteristics within your personal trait and uh, values, then you should definitely look for uh, uh, certain jobs and not go for the others. For example, uh, the one who prefers uh, to be involved uh, to be involved in helping others or developing some projects uh, in a social context and the one who are friendly and cooperative there is a good chance that that person he or she will be more suitable and will do much better uh, as the so as uh, as a social worker teacher counselor or a clinical uh, psychologist exhibit 5.6 is a graphical representation of the previous slide here these different personality types have been uh, graphically organized and the people with the adjacent traits are more likely uh, to work better together to mesh better together uh, in a professional uh, setting in extension of the previous slides there have been several models uh, one is the person organization fit which talks about the possible fit between a certain uh, people's values and the work they could or should do so people who are high on extroversion fit well with the aggressive and team oriented cultures the authors also say that the people high on openness to experience uh, are found to be fit better in organizations that empathize innovation rather than standardization any person's uh, probability of fitting in with any organizations um, based on his or her personality characteristic traits or values um, can be also looked into across uh, different cultures uh, different national cultures and there have been studies uh, in the book we have seen uh, that look into the power distance individualism versus collectivism uh, look into that relationship uh, and tension between and the uh, in interpretation between masculinity and femininity expectations and uh, strategies when it comes to uncertainty and also workplace uh, uh, policies in the long term versus short term orientation all these five dimensions value dimensions have been analyzed across different cultures uh, in the book and what we have seen that in different countries there are different cultural values uh, in any ways uh, it's very critical for the people to better understand how the people behave and it's v it becomes very critical when it comes to dealing with uh, multinational workforce or multinational companies across different countries But when we look into this Hofstede's uh, five value dimensions of uh, national culture, this uh, study was, uh, even though effective, it was uh, to some extent uh, uh, old and there had been uh, different uh, methodology related concerns because when uh, this researcher has done this study, during that time the world was different and by this time the socio-economic and different political changes were there boundaries were redrawn uh, political leaderships have changed uh, and also the socio-economic reality of different countries also have been evolved given all these changes 
Hofstede's uh, five value dimensions of national culture has been updated. And the version that we talk about uh, to some length in the chapter is the GLOBE framework for assessing culture. And it had an extensive study in 62 countries among 825 organizations. Uh, it used uh, the variables similar to Hofstede's. In addition, there had been some new ones, for example, um, performance orientation. And eventually, the book talks about uh, the way uh, the new study better incorporated the different changes and how it affected the real world scenarios. So, despite the concerns that the people raised, Hofstede uh, has been one of the most widely cited uh, social scientists ever, and his work, his framework, has left a lasting mark on organizational behavior. So, to sum it up, what are the implications for managers? Why should we need to understand people's value? Why should we need to understand different people's personality? Uh, of course, these are critical because personality definitely does not always give us the uh, whole picture, but it certainly set up the stage to better understand, uh, better understand the human resources we are dealing with. And definitely when we are hiring new people definitely we should consider screening job candidates uh, based on um, the big five traits uh, and uh, wh whatever thing is critical and uh, for and uh, demanding uh, uh, for the job at hand that's that's very important if we want uh, we want somebody for a job in a customer service at a front desk or online to deal with the uh, the regu uh, regular and newer customers, definitely we need somebody with a lot of social skill uh, and who can be innovative in different uh, critical scenarios. And certainly we should not have somebody who loves to follow strict uh, and specific orders. So that's very, very important to look into. And definitely uh, we should always strive to have uh, a optimal fit for the existing working force that we have in our company uh, so that we can get the best out of them. And definitely uh, the results that we have from the per different personality measurement studies, uh, for example, with MBTI and others uh, should be helpful uh, for further feedback and training and development, further development of the human resources. Uh, those knowledge definitely should be uh, shared among different departments, should be transparent. Uh, uh, and at the same time, such knowledge should be used to motivate uh, the people who we are working with uh, for a better productive uh, professional experience. Thank you so much.